Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Nerd for No Reason podcast. I am one of your hosts, Mark. And I'm Spooky Raven. Hello. Welcome to Spooktober because Mark forgot it's Spooktober. I did not forget a Spooktober. I just That's... didn't plan anything. Mm. I was going to be like, and I'm the leader of this monster squad. And I figured that was a little bit too much on the nose. I'm the leader of this crazy, insane cult that we just watch slasher movies. And then we just sit and talk about our feelings. <laughs> Hey, look, that's a good cult. I you know, joined that uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> right, right before we started the show proper, I trauma dumped on Raven for 20 minutes and was just like, hey, boy, let me get some stuff off my chest. Amen. Because <laughs> I don't have adults to talk to. I love a good trauma dump, honestly. It's my favorite. When other people like just, they're like, oh, I have all these feelings about stuff. I'm like, give it to me. Give me all of your hot gossip. I don't care if I don't know any of these people involved. It is so fun and interesting to like have that tiny little perspective into someone else's life. Ugh, it really just like is the like creme de la creme of my life. I'm not even joking. Like when my clients are like, oh yeah, let me tell you about our neighbors. I'm like, give me the hot goss. What do you got, girl? And I will stand there for as long as they want to talk about, like, the craziest shit going on. It's my favorite. So, yeah. I don't mind. <laughs> All right. Well, good. I need it. How's it going, man? Besides, you know, all the craziness of your own little life. Well, um, so every- everything's going good. Like, it was fall break for the kids this week, and uh, I took a couple days off, and we had the fair in town with such hit fair acts as Warrant and Genuine and Country Person that I can't remember his name. Um, And so that was was pretty cool. I didn't go to any of those concerts because I'm an old man and can't go to any of those concerts. And I don't want to see like a 75 year old warrant up there going, she is my cherry pie. Um, it just kind of loses its Hell luster. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Uh, but uh, I took Amy and one of her friends to the fair because I was like, I'm not riding any of them rides. One, because I think I'm too big. And two, because Ferris wheels are the devil. Not riding any of them. So. Uh, I, I got with one of my friends at church who is, whose kids are Amy's best friends and said, Hey, can I take, uh, can I take one of your kids and take them to the fair? Like, seriously, if you just like pay for the cover and whatever, I'll pay for the ride armband and whatever. We're like, we're good. And she was like, okay. So boom. And I took a running tally cause I was really curious of like, um, how much um uh how much money i saved yeah that's right uh how much money i saved by buying two 30 dollar armband bracelets for unlimited rides and these kids were off to the like they boom 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 we got there at noon when the rides opened and we left at 4 30 and Dang. these kids rode uh, let me see how many rides they rode. They rode probably easily, uh, probably about 20 rides or so. Um, and total tickets combined was, oh, how many? What It was 85 tickets, I think it was. Oh, my God. Uh, around that. Okay. Tickets were on average $1.25 a piece. They were selling 65 tickets for $60 or 60 tickets for 65. I can't remember. Okay. Yeah. So I did the math. Had I not bought those armbands for both of those kids, it would have cost me $111 a piece, $222 and some change for them to ride all the rides that they rode. Oh my God. Yes. So that's insane. 
Yeah. It's become like pro and that's not even including the cover charge to get into the fair. Yeah. Um so yeah, like it's become like really almost kind of prohibitively expensive if you go in there without a plan. Food fair is ridiculous. Oh, it is yeah. almost too expensive to eat, dude. <laughs> Sorry kids, we we got to hit the bojangles before we go. Stock up on some biscuits. <laughs> we are limited to later. one. We're, we are going to share one deep fried Oreo. Oh, uh, ooh. which to be fair, we could have shared one deep fried Oreo um, or deep Those fried Twinkie. Are... Excuse me. Yeah. No. Dude, but deep fried Oreos are so freaking good, but they are so rich. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, they are. Ugh. Now I want like a plate full. Thanks. <laughs> yeah i had a deep fried twinkie and i could see I, I could see sounds after that man i could hear <laughs> colors it was it was insane like i i, I ascended to super saiyan it was oh my god the, the euphoria thing. i got from it <laughs> whoa ah! <laughs> <laughs> but well, no it was good times though. amy was good her friend was good we had we we did have us a big time and uh you know I could definitely tell towards the end of the day that Amy had just had enough of just being awake. And I was like, go to bed. I don't want to go to bed. She's just arguing Aww. about everything. I'm like, but you're tired. I'm not tired. And then she'd lay down in bed. I'm like, are you tired? Man, I'm so exhausted, Dad. <laughs> like, go to sleep. I'm not going to sleep. <laughs> oh, bless her. She doesn't understand the like value of a good nap. Man. No, she doesn't. I am. She might miss something. I'm in my like 27, and I'm like, yo, I'll take a nap anytime. You offer me a nap, and I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I got Dude, like I... 45 minutes until I got my next client. Watch me. I'm going to go take a nap somewhere. Dude, I am almost 45, and I could tell you right now, given if I knew that I wasn't going to stay up late tonight, I would take a nap right now. Dude, I know. When, well, honestly, like when we started talking about it, you were like, well, actually, let's, let's push it off a little later. I was like, dang it. My nap's going to have to wait. (laughs) (laughs) Cause we went out, uh, today, my aunt and I did to like go scout out some venues to see like, cause we had like a good, decent little chunk of places that we were like, let's just go look at them and see what we like. And then we can schedule tours for, like, this one big day that we can, like, have my grandparents come down and Chris will be off and we can all go do that stuff. And at some point, because we're driving around in my aunt's convertible, like, towards the, like, last stop, sun was hit. We had just had us a nice, like, good little meal. And then I was like, man, I'm getting pretty tired. Sunday afternoon nap, it's calling me. She was like, I feel that, man. But it was it was such a beautiful day today. Oh my gosh. This weather. Are you are you looking for places to like open up a storefront? Oh, no 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 no. For the wedding, sorry. Not oh, bad. okay. I forgot that I didn't say that. <laughs> Just for the venue, you know. Okay. For my All right. for my storefront. <laughs> no, my she's not really looking into doing that she wants to continue to do just mobile which is fair but sometimes i'm like it would be nice if i didn't have to drive around and people just came to me but there's there's a lot of pros and cons to having a shop versus doing mobile to both you know right yeah but last night we uh we carved some pumpkins with some of our friends and it was like so nice. I hope you're enjoying the weather as much as I am because oh my god. Although I know you Dude, live in Georgia, so it's probably still a little warm. N- no, the weather has <gasps> been absolutely incredible. The day That's we went crazy. to the fair cuz I was genuinely worried like man, it's going to be you know, like 85 degrees down here is pushing it on the hot side, you know. Yeah. It's like right at that temperature we're just like, ah, oh, I hate it. Um but no, it was around 80 degrees. Um, it was absolutely perfect. 
The only time that I was kind of like, eh, I've had enough of this was, you know, when I'm probably around three o'clock when I'm standing in direct sunlight. Yeah. Uh, but I was able to kind of hide in the shadows and I was like, no, this is actually kind of nice. I'd really like to sit down. But, you know, other than that, it was it was really good. You know, I actually had to turn on the heater in the house for the first time this season. So that Ooh. was nice. Wow. That's crazy. Wow. So Are you Georgia people. The heater like turns on for like five minutes and then it's back to hot. It's just and and it was just just warm enough, you know, just or it was just cool enough where I was like, mm, man, yeah, I'm gonna turn on the heat, you know, yeah. just for a second. And I did, and the whole house smelled like something was burning, and now it doesn't do that anymore. <laughs> right? I know. That first time that you always turn it on, you're like Man, I hope everything's okay and it doesn't catch on fire, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, have you by any chance been following? I don't know. Do you have you seen this wild ass gangster ass cat on TikTok? Because I've been obsessed with this dumb cat for like the past week. Um, uh, a gangster cat? What's up? Well. Uh, I don't so, really get on TikTok that much, to be honest. So unless I've somehow come across it on like Instagram, Twitter, or Reddit, probably not. Okay, I don't know if he's on Instagram or not, but it's this this. Uh, I think it's Chinese. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, in Asian country, a man uh, put a camera on his cat, and this cat apparently has a turf. Uh, around this apartment complex and if there's another cat around his his neighborhood he just walks up and just like just starts squabbling with these cats and is an absolute menace to other cats just running up they start scrapping and and the one cat takes off and he's just just running after this damn uh, after these other cats just getting it and i saw one today literally right before we started recording where this mean ass cat just strolled up in someone else's garage and there was a cat laying there and spooked the hell out of it. And the cat just kind of the, 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 um, not the mean cat, the other cat kind of bopped him on the face. Like, what are you doing? And this cat was just kind of making noises very much like someone who's like, nah, like, you know, you don't want to do that. Like, what are you doing, man? Like <laughs> I could clearly eat you and kill you right now, but I'm not going to do it. Right. I'm not gonna yeah. do it because this is a mutual beneficial relationship. I expect my kibble on the first of the month, you know. <laughs> so, it, it's wild, and I'm obsessed with it. Um, yeah. And then this has led me to other cat content where people are like, I'm gonna put a camera on my cat, and it's just wholesome of cats Dude. just kind of talking to each other where they're just. Mah, 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 I mah, love mah, it mah. when you hear them like doing the little like chirps and trills, and they like yeah. Because they see other like birds or like squirrels and other cats and stuff, and it's just so cute. I do really enjoy that kind of content. I definitely have a few friends that we like send that kind of stuff to each other, just because it's like, all right, let's watch uh, what these cats do. Because there's like some places in like some countries that they'll just like, you know, leave their windows open and their cats just kind of come and go as they want. So they strap like a little GoPro or something onto them just see what they do oh yep. i found one video where it's this cat and she was like let's see what this little goblin brought back today and he was bringing back the most random stuff the first thing was like a scratch off and she was like what and then at some point it brought in like an unused pad and like just a bunch of other things that she was like where the fuck do you get this stuff but at some point, it brought back this little, like, packaged, uh, it was like, what was it called? It was like a little tiny glass pickle, like, so small, like, maybe the, like, length of a penny. And it was like a good luck pickle. And I was like, what the heck is this? Where's this cat hanging out? I want to hang out with this cat. Hmm. So, I get what you're saying. I'm on that. I'm on that save wave link. Wave link? God. Yeah, wavelength. But yeah. Um, uh, 
something else that has been just consuming, if it has not been this wild ass cat, I just want to say right now that uh, this new Dragon Ball fighting game, Sparkling Zero, has is my th- I have not played a second of this game, and but the content creators, specifically the Black community has been playing this game and has been my absolute favorite thing to watch because I feel like if there was ever a hype man for a product, it is the the enthusiasm that black content creators have given Dragon Ball Z Sparkling Zero. It is the craziest thing, and it fills me with such joy just to watch their reactions because there's parts in the game where... I guess you can follow a story mode and then there's points when if you do something, you get to have like an alternate story and watching the different alternate stories has just been, it's been like, uh, um, not ASMR. What's uh, uh melatonin. No, not melatonin. I don't know. The shit's great. Serotonin. Okay. Serotonin. Yes. <laughs> you said melatonin. <laughs> it puts you to sleep. Okay, I no, guess. No, it does the opposite. It makes me happy. It is a serotonin dump, and it is just fantastic. So Nice. Yeah, yeah. that's fun. And speaking of Dragon Ball, the the new Dragon Ball series, Dragon Ball Daima, I'm going to say it, is coming to Netflix next week, and I can't wait to watch it because I love me some Dragon Ball, and I'm glad they're doing a new series. So. Interesting. Yeah. It's 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 a good time for Dragon Ball fans. So whoop 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 whoop. Are you ready All right. To... Oh boy, am I ready? I I'm waiting to talk about this movie with you so bad. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, Same. this week we talk or we watched the 1987 cult hit movie, The Monster Squad. Which is by all, well, I mean, I think the only way that I can really, if I was pitching this to anybody who had no clue about any of this, but like, what's this movie about? I'm like, it's kind of like Goonies meets the Universal Monsters. True. And, and shenanigans ensues. And, you know, uh, so Rave, well, as someone who, I know that people of my age will look back fondly on this movie. I am dying to know what Raven thinks about it. So Raven, what did you think of the monster squad? Uh, I had no idea what we were watching going into this. And I'm very glad that I didn't have any idea because I was in for a ride. And Chris and I, the whole time were just like cackling <laughs> at like some of these jokes. Oh my God. These kids are funny as heck. These parents are wild. The monsters. I like I like the monsters. I like how goofy looking that little uh fish monster was. Um <laughs> This fun little monster squad was just like doing their thing. They weren't giving a shit. They were just they were all about it, especially their friend Rudy. And Rudy was over there just trying to Fuck around and find out. And that's what he was about. <laughs> I like that for him. Uh, I I can't wait for us to actually dive into this movie. It was good. It was campy. But it's like got some really good humor in it. That like was just so unexpected. There were so many unexpected just <laughs> jokes that constantly kept flying through it. So Mark. What do you think of this movie? This movie is, I am one of those kids who this was like at the absolute right time for it to come out. Like I am the target audience for this movie when it came out. I remember watching this on VHS at, I, at a friend's house and for sure, this this movie is it, it's ingrained in my DNA for a lot of different reasons. But 
it is like this weird combination of like little rascals, Goonies, a universal horror movie. And it is just kind of accented and put to like that second, like that next tier of goodness by the Stan Winston monsters. Um, and I, and I think that that that's part of the reason this movie is so good is that you have this monster legend creature legend working on this and, um, uh, it's, but it does kind of have like an imbalance of themes at times where there's like parts of it where I'm like, this is, is this supposed to be a, like a super kitty movie? Because we have like that one kid who's like four with the little <laughs> dog while they're running from a wolf man, Dracula and three harpies. <laughs> it was so good. And then we're talking about that one girl who's a virgin and we got this weird divorce plot and, um, yeah, there's, there's, I think if you wild. just, if you just shut your brain off and just enjoy it, it's great. And this is kind of where I'm like at a weird kind of spot being where I'm at with this podcast and watching movies is I start watching it and I can't shut my brain off. You know, uh, this is, would be a great movie for me to sit down, have a drink and not have to worry about taking notes for us to talk about. Um, but I do enjoy it. I enjoyed it this time, but I'm also at the same time getting ready to pick this movie apart piece by piece. So let's get into it. <laughs> so this movie was written by Shane Black. Do you, does that name ring a bell with you at all, Raven? Uh, not that I can think of. Okay. This man wrote the Predator movies. He wrote okay. he wrote Lethal Weapon. He wrote Gremlins. He wrote Iron Man 3 oh. and directed Iron Man 3. Oh. Um, uh, let's see. Last Action Hero, The Last Boy Scout. He, th- this man has written and directed a lot of movies. Um, so it's wild to see his name on this. Actually, I'm looking through his IMDb. He did, I don't know what order this was in, but according to his IMDb, it was Lethal Weapon and Monster Squad, and then Lethal Weapon 2, Last Boy Scout, Lethal Weapon 3, Last Action Hero. <laughs> like, that's his IMDb list going from first first and on up. Like, his first five movies are three Lethal Weapon movies, The Monster Squad, and The Last Boy Scout. So, yes, all bangers. It's an interesting lineup. Okay. Yeah. So, um... What did you think about some of the 80s tropes or some of like specifically the way they bullied Horace? Man, that that poor kid. Jeez. They literally started calling him fat kid from like the first second. Like the poor kid did had his name in there like twice. His own actual name. Oh, man. Maybe a little sad, but like, he seems like he was like, whatever, I vibe with it. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't like vibe with it, but he's like, I just got to go into it. Ain't nobody here trying to be on my side. Although I so- do like when uh that part where the two kids are like, you know, the first scene where you see him, two kids are like bullying him. And then Rudy comes up and he's like, uh, uh, uh. I see what you're doing there. How about you uh, pick up your candy and make sure it gets finished off? Shout out to Rudy. That's a real one. That's a real now, good friend. Now, I, I like Rudy, but they never explain like how Rudy, seemingly the cool kid, got caught up with these other kids. You know? like Yeah. Were they uh, friends before? Or is he just like an anti-bullying kid? Or was he like trying to get with old boy's sister? Like... There's all these things, and I'm like, or is he really just a good dude? Yeah, from the very first second that he, like, showed up, I was like, okay, all these kids are definitely in elementary. You see him pull up on his little bike. He's smoking. He's got the, like, leather jacket with the, like, cool 80s hair, the dark sunglasses, and I'm like, 
this kid is absolutely giving middle school vibes. And then he says that he's in middle school. And I was like, how are you smoking? What is happening here? Why Did are they you say he out? was in middle school? Yes. Oh, I, shit. I thought he, he literally was, was, right? Like, he gives off that impression that he's, like, trying to be older. But he's definitely, like, because they say he's a junior high. And I was like, oh, interesting. Okay. But, yeah. No, because I was definitely paying attention to, like, try and see, like, how old this kid is compared to the rest of these little kids. Because you got literally, like you said, a four-year-old and then, like, three fourth graders, fifth graders, maybe? Yeah. That's wild to me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, even, I'm even more confused. Did they, <laughs> did they have a... They had a wood shop in middle school? Right. No, Chris absolutely pulled that out. But the biggest thing was when he was making the freaking silver bullets, like, y'all had that in middle school? Explain. Explain how you were letting kids melt down metals and do that kind of stuff. That's insane. That's that's bonkers. Well... <clears throat> I always thought he was cool, but to be, I'll, I'll tell you this, for some reason, I cannot figure out why one of the bullies, his name is Jason Hervey, uh, most notably from a very popular TV show in the eighties called the wonder years. He was one of the brothers. He did a bunch of acting throughout the eighties. Um, it's kind of like a, a, a teenager, like the teenager, right? He was all over the place. Uh, I thought that that dude was the coolest kid not necessarily in this particular role or like not any particular role i don't know why i latched onto him i was just like man this, this, jason hervey is cool uh yeah <laughs> and this was one of my like oh shit it was jason hervey so yeah yeah so uh what do you think about <laughs> how they just kept talking about this dude scary german guy that was his name scary german guy yeah that's literally oh that's his actual like cast name too yeah dude they kept like bringing that up and i was like hey look guys you actually like him we've established that he's actually a pretty cool guy um he, he seems all right and then there's that one part that one scene because chris and i like really like honed in on it for a second but like they're like hey look there's monsters and stuff and he goes yeah, I understand monsters. And then he, like, you see that tattoo on his left arm. Yeah. Yeah, I made a note about that. So There's... Chris and I were like, what um, what we got going on here with that, that little thing? And then at some point, he's driving one of those big old, like, Nazi, like, those big, uh, what do you call them? Uh, the, yeah, it's this is like a Humvee Jeep, like military yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, how, where did you get this from? Why do you have this? There's a lot of questionable things that this guy has going on for him. I'm not gonna lie, he might be a little sketchy, but he was just feeding some kids some pie and like tell them some crazy little tales. See, you could do that. You could do that back in the day. You could just be a crazy old man and be like, "Come on in for pie, kids. It's okay." <laughs> <laughs> yeah your kids will, you, your parents will they'll be fine they don't even care and you're not wrong they didn't care they were just like yeah just come home by dinner and so I not live in that world oh <laughs> <laughs> i'm so there's so many things about this movie that we're just supposed to believe like the mom bought this crazy um uh this crazy german book or or yeah german whatever book it is from the crazy german guy i guess pres presumably at a yard sale uh bought it and was like i can't read this let me get it from my son and you know it was like he goes he go kid something for you i picked it up from the crazy german guy <laughs> and yeah that's just i don't know man 
Like, and how did Van Hel? I guess how did Van Helsing's diary make it all the way from Transylvania in the 16th century all the way to modern day Los Angeles? Maybe sure. New Orleans. Kind of hard to tell. There was a lot of swamps, but it was clearly Los Angeles. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting. You know, you already brought up the topic of the weird, like, scene that was going on with the dad and his kid where he's basically like, we're going to marriage counseling tonight. What was that? Okay. Here's, because uh, that all right, <laughs> absolutely so, broke prison. This whole divorce subplot is so wild because it doesn't make any sense in the rest of the context of the movie. Right. So it's it's so weird. And and I would get it because, you know, kids are smart. And if it was just like, yeah, you know, like we're going out tonight, you know, me and your mom, we got we, we got to go do marriage counseling and whatever. And kids are smart enough to be like, oh, OK, cool. Like they're working on their marriage. But yeah, uh, the fact that like this was like they really honed in on it, and there was even a part later on in the movie when, uh, when Dracula shows up to the house and then like runs the car through the thing and they blow up the cop car in front of the house, you know, like within the last like twenty minutes of the movie as everything else is going on, uh, when the dad goes into the house to like look for the kids he runs in she has her bags packed sitting by the door and i'm like she's getting ready to leave him like yeah. she was gonna leave in the middle of the night with her kids and by all accounts like he's not a bad parent he's just he's just not a good husband yeah he's, he's not, not like there right because he's a cop which i kind of get you know and it's kind of shitty for everybody involved but it doesn't warrant like you leaving in the middle of the night with the kids so yeah it's so weird yeah it, yeah, yeah, yeah well there was like after he has like the whole talk where he's like oh we're supposed to go out and then he like gets a call and he's like i actually have to go to work now and he just like tries to like or no they were like getting ready for dinner or something but he tries to just like slide out the door without saying anything to the wife. And she literally sees him as like, uh, hello. And I was just like, this is insane. This family dynamic itself, these parents, they probably shouldn't be together. Let's be real. Yeah. But I don't think I actually noticed the bag. So that's insane. And my God. And the dad shows back up, and, and this kind of segues into my next wild ass point that just doesn't make any sense in this damn movie, is when the dad shows back up later, after they they shoot Uncle Rico, they, uh, um, what's his face, um, the main kid, I can't remember his name, uh, Sean. Sean is out on his roof watching this movie that he wanted to go with his friends to go see on the absolute biggest screen in a drive-in theater that I've ever seen in my entire life. Right. This thing was like 50 stories tall. People in Burbank could see this movie theater, could see this screen. And I'm like, why in the world were you so hung up about going? Literally go out on your roof, my dude. If you could pick up the transmission with your radio... And watch it with some binoculars? Like, do that. Yeah. And then the dad just, like, comes up on the roof and's like, what I miss? With, like, a bag of Burger King. Also, Burger King absolutely had to have sponsored them. The amount of oh. times you see Burger King in there, insane. Yeah, them and Pepsi. Pepsi was always labeled out, man. Dang. That's wild. Yeah. Um, All right. Go ahead. Seeing seeing all the like actual monsters together was kind of interesting. The mummy looked pretty good, honestly. I think this was the absolute best looking traditional mummy that has been put to film. I th I think it is. Yeah, it like it genuinely looked really good. Uh, the Wolfman though, it was pretty ugly. Let's not be let's not be wrong. No, I love ugly. this Wolfman. 
I love looks... this Wolfman. <laughs> His face is like so pointy. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. Listen. I don't know. There was it was giving Chihuahua. <laughs> Long haired Chihuahua. Listen, we can't we can't determine what what we turn into when the Wolfman bites us. Okay, maybe he's from may, maybe it's a Chupacabra ghost. I mean, Chupacabra ghost, Chupacabra Wolfman. Okay, maybe it's just this weird goat killer from Mexico, and instead of it being like a cool wolf, uh, you know, he he got bit by Chupacabra Wolfman, and now he has to look like that. You over there, wolf shaming this dude. Yeah, I'm going to keep wolf shaming, whatever. <laughs> Catch me out there shaming y'all wolves. No, uh, no I, I love this wolf, man. I love him. There, uh, <laughs> there was just, there's so much. I, I'm, I'm with you. I love the, I love that they have all the, you know, quote unquote classic universal monsters together. And yeah. the special effects that they do at some points in this movie are like super detailed and like almost on the verge of scary. Like the part when like the very beginning, when the, when the bat changes into Dracula and you see just a little bit of that special effects makeup. And then later on when they shoot the bat and then the bats in the, you know, the warehouse or whatever it was uh, and the cops about to shoot him again and it's just like this weird half man, half bat. Yeah. I'm like, oh man, that's kind of that's kind of monster horror movie, right? Like that's I good. Really, I really like that. Yeah. And then they shove some dynamite in the Wolfman, and he blows up, and then he magically forms back together. Yes. After they kick him in the nards, dude. That yes. That absolutely killed me. <laughs> it just kept going for it. Kick Wolfman in the nards. <laughs> That's the line. I swear, if you walk up to anyone who's forty years or older and ask if the Wolfman has nards, they will <laughs> they will recite that. Kick him in the nards. The Wolfman's got nards. <laughs> it is. It's ingrained in our brain. I promise you. It's such a weird thing. Everybody saw this movie when they were young, and this was. I'm so glad I get to share the fact with you that Wolfman's got nards. <laughs> okay. We were all wondering it. Let's be real. That's so good. So, what did Chris think, or you think? I don't know. I feel like Chris would kind of have like a better beat on this. Did Chris have any kind of reaction to the the Alucard Dracula thing when it was like, oh, Alucard called school, wanted to talk to you about the book, possible money, and he's sitting there writing out, you know, trying to figure out. The Alucard Dracula thing. Did Chris have any type of reaction to that? Not that I can think of. And I say that only because that that's kind of like a Castlevania video game thing. Oh. And I didn't know if he would have been like, Alucard, ha! <laughs> okay. No, I don't think he caught that. Or if he did, he like didn't say it to me because he would be like, Ah, uh, she probably doesn't know what this is, which is fair. Um, Chris and I did notice something though, because uh, we know that this movie like takes place in the eighties. How did Dracula know how to drive a hearse? Because if it's like, because um, it said like you know, a hundred years ago or some shit like that. The first hearse came out, like the actual first drivable hearse with an engine came out in 1909. We looked it up. We had like a whole conversation about it. (laughs) You guys are doing my kind of research. This man has been in a box for a hot minute. And we were, Chris goes, hold on one second. How he driving that car like he knows how to drive a car? (laughs) And I was like, huh, I don't know. Was he ever in a box? Yeah, wasn't he in a coffin? That was Frankenstein. Was he not in a coffin? Was he just a bat hanging out? He was the just whole time? a bat hanging out in the airplane. That's crazy. He never, he never presumably dies. He never like in the intro that takes place way back when. We never see him die. I don't even think okay. we see Dracula in the intro. 
And um yeah, when when we're on the plane, the box is Frankenstein. Yeah. Not not Dracula cuz Dracula's a bat flying around. Huh. How's Dracula keeping up with all these damn boxes? I mean, I'm sure at some point he was probably cruising around Transylvania and was like, "Oh, I got to learn how to drive a hearse." Oh. Cuz that's how they uh, talk in Transylvania. Uh, uh. <laughs> So okay okay so when we find frankenstein <laughs> did you have the same emotional roller coaster i did during that entire frankenstein scene where oh. where we go from like oh man we're supposed to be scared of frankenstein it's like no frankenstein's cool and then he sees a mask of himself and he's like oh this is scary ah. oh. and you're like Oh, no, not Frankenstein. No. No, not little pervert Frankenstein over there watching some boobies. Man, he don't he don't know what boobies are. <laughs> he clicked that the sh- camera. That shit was cracking me up. Okay, he got that photo, though, and he yeah, was he holding it above them kids like, what's up? I know what y'all want. <laughs> um, I did really like that first like interaction that you see of Frankenstein where he's walking up to that little girl. Because, you know, in the, like, classic, iconic horror movies, he, like, kills a little girl by, like, throwing her into the pond and whatever. Uh, so just seeing that, I was like, oh, we're going to kill this kid? This poor three or four year old kid? <laughs> and then he was just like, no, she's my friend. Which I thought was so cute. I'm here for Frankenstein being, like, the nicest of all of them. Yo, I shout think more out, Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Shout out to Phoebe. Phoebe was great. I love. I love that little girl. She did. Yeah, she was sweet. She should have been allowed in the can, Monster Squad. The I whole found time. Frankenstein. Can I be in your Monster Club now? <laughs> They're like, what? I, I love her. Precious. Uh, um. I don't know. I'm just looking through my notes, man. All my notes always look like the the scribblings of a madman. Um, uh, the the part where Dracula shows up to their house, and instead of like using his cool Dracula power, he's like, "Nope, dynamite! I'm gonna blow up their clubhouse with dynamite." I'm like, mm, "That's a little bit of an overreaction, I think." Dude, where'd he get it from? You I'm, just carry that around with you, sir? <laughs> I don't know if you got to check your bags when you're on a cargo plane like that. Ah, yeah, maybe not. He was just stuffing it in, like, the pockets of everyone. Like, here you go. Here's a little in Frankenstein. Shove some in the mummy. They won't know. It's whatever. Um, I'm just now seeing that in my notes, because my notes were kind of weird as well, Uh, that scene that we were just talking about where... <laughs> where Dracula does like the little mid body change after he got like shot and he was like part bat, part human. Uh at some point Chris and I were like, yo, is that Dracula dick? <laughs> because it looks like there is like a bat penis just hanging out. So that was do interesting. I, do I need to go back and look I, for you, bat dick? <laughs> you might need to. But I literally was like, what was that? Well, we got there, and I think Chris and I might have backed it up just to be like, did we see this correctly? We were cracking up. This movie. What is this movie rated? Oh, uh, this, was, this was PG-13. A... Yeah, this is this has to be one of the earlier PG-13 movies. That's so wild. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Uh, then you find out um, that that one kid's sister is not a virgin. And then they're like, oh shit, what are we going to do? And then they remember, oh yeah, we let this three-year-old be in our club now. Surely this kid's got to be a virgin. <laughs> Can you imagine being like three and having to listen to some German guy? 
speak German to you, and you just have to, like, repronounce it. Like, I would be like, you got to say it to me way slower. And she's just over there like, I got you. Say it to me. Let's do it. Props to that kid. <laughs> yeah, it it is weird. I don't know, man. This this is just one of those like weird parts where like, oh well, if any virgin could have worked and you could just read it, why did we go through all of this other stuff? You know, we should have just got Phoebe from the get go. There's no girls allowed. Uh, Not the no. Monster Squad. But how'd that dog get up here? That was the best one. Yeah. That was like one of my favorite. Like Chris and I just kept saying it to each other. How'd that dog get up here? <laughs> I think my favorite joke, like the dog get up here, was pretty good. But like one of the best jokes that I put in my notes was like one of the beginning when they were talking about that one teacher that they call Meow Mix because her head looks like a cat. And then they finally show the chick, and it's like, oh, damn. That's pretty rough that your students would call you <laughs> Meow Mix behind your back. I enjoyed it. Dude, we used to, we used to like, we used to come with all kinds of wild ass names for our teachers. Man, kids, uh, they be on that shit. They will find out the most ruthless thing about you. And that is the entire personality that you are. It's awful. And that kids are awful, and it, man. And it will last for your entire, entire life. Uh, somehow, kids know, and they will share it with whoever. They'll be like, "Oh no, uh, you know, like, yeah, that's a, uh, uh, that's meow mix. And then the next thing you know, like their brother, their sister, the kids underneath of them, everybody be like, oh yeah, you're meow mix for the next ever of your life. Oh yeah. Or they find that like one thing that ticks off a teacher and then you tell it to the like class that like comes after you so they can also do it. We did something like that in high school. What It was literally like our science teacher. And so the like... What is it called? The periodic thing, like the little. The periodic table of elements? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, anyways, the thing for salt is NACL. And one of the guys in my class was just like, oh, <laughs> knackle? <laughs> and my teacher was just like, you mean NACL? <laughs> and. It became a whole thing that our, like, entire class kept pronouncing it knackle to piss off our teacher. And then we told the kids below us. And at some point, that teacher, like, called. <laughs> because that teacher was, like, our, like, uh, I don't even remember what we called them. But they were basically, like, in charge of, like, our student class. Like, we each would have, like, two teachers or, like, administrative people that would be in charge of our class for like class meeting like you know entire yeah. class meetings but like when we had one of our class meetings he was like i don't know which one of you told the new students about sodium chloride but it's not funny and you need to stop teaching the other kids that <laughs> it was a whole thing i love when kids piss off teachers it's fun anyways sorry that was such a ramble. No, I'm here in for my, it, man. In my head, it's so much funnier than it is just like saying it. Oh, if, listen, if I'm I, here if for I it. If I said it to like, you know, the people from my class, they'd be like, man. Man, I remember Mr. Knackle. Mr. Hicks would get fucking pissed. That was so good. <laughs> good old man. <laughs> <laughs> so this movie ended in probably the most 80s Goonies Way fashion, or Goonie fashion words. The Goonies Way possible. Trope. Uh, with uh, a rap song. Like, hey kids, you know what's cool? You know how we're really going to sell this to the youth? Let's make a Monster Squad rap song. 
Hell yeah. <laughs> This is this is incredible to me. Uh, the I for completely forgot that this thing had like its own Monster Squad rap at the end, and when it started playing, I was like, "Hold on, <laughs> yeah, buddy." Uh, it, I love it. It's great. I think we need to bring that back. I I think we need to make more action adventure movies for tweens that like like this, like Goonies, that are like these big kind of high concept fun action adventure movies that just involve kids getting into shenanigans where ultimately the stakes are kind of like low, but kind of high at the same time. Like the adults are like, no, you know, clearly there's no such thing as Dracula. And then Dracula shows up and we're like, Oh no. You know, we're like dumb adults. Wah, wah. Uh, Yeah. Well, you know, um, I feel like they kind of do make similar movies to that, but it's more of like the horror and it's like revamping of movies in the movies that I've like seen. Like, you know, we did the newer Ghostbusters where it's kind of like that. I think yeah. it's just, it's just hard nowadays to try and do that because kids of that age are like, there's so much more, experienced and worldly than like people in the 80s were so it was like brand new and could absolutely be like yo this shit's wild and it's so funny whereas kids nowadays will look at be like i can definitely tell that most of that was cg and uh actually people um hate this one actor or actress you know like they're like we we canceled this actress so the fact that you brought him into this movie and blah 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 it's insane. So I think it's just like harder to do and make it a good one. Because I do enjoy watching stuff like this, but I realize that most of it is like 80s, 90s that you really get the like good sense of it. You know? Yeah. That's mm. such. All right. Well, you got any more thoughts on the Monster Squad? No. Except for, you know, Wolfman's got nards. Wolfman does have nards. Scientifically proven in this movie. Facts. Facts. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to our next segment of the show, my favorite part of the show, where we talk about the little things that have made us happy. And Raven, I don't know if we're gonna be able to top next week or last week. Um All right. Man. You know, you dropped the bombshell on us. I'm still recovering. I have been <laughs> just thrilled. I think I might be more excited than you guys are. Okay, uh, yeah, sure. So You don't even know the fun plans that we are beginning to plan. So we mm. are very excited. I just want to know, is is who's going to be your ring barrier? Is it going to be Kavik, Mudslide, Boo, who? And... We we have had an actual serious talk about how much we love our dogs, but how much none of our dogs should be at the wedding because <laughs> all of their little personalities are a little complicated. Because if it's Boo, the whole time he's just going to be like, Mom, I need you to hold me. If he can't find me, he's going to cry because he's going to be like, where's my mom? I don't want anyone else. Hey, Grandma, can you find Mom for me? Like, the whole time. Kavik is our screamer. And he'll just, like, howl and scream the whole time. Because he's excited. Because he sees a bunch of people that he likes. And then we're going to be like, Kavik, shut up. And then Mudslide is our big anxiety baby. Where he's like, I'm so scared of everyone. Please, nobody look at me. I want to go home. <laughs> So it's it's a it's a fun mixture. We'll try and figure something out. Maybe we'll just like I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It'll, it'll, we'll figure something out. Maybe I'll just like roll a skeleton head down and be like, "Here you go." <laughs> it's in the it's in the cranium. You just got to open it up. That could be fun. Good spooky fun. 
All right, Raven, what has made you happy this week? Well, on Wednesday night, Chris and I went to Nashville and went to see one of my favorite bands. We went and saw 21 Pilots on their tour. Um, This has been a lot of... So, I do genuinely love 21 Pilots. They're, like, one of my favorite bands. They have... They write about, like, a lot of things that are, like, you know... uh, Mental health awareness and stuff like that. And the writer of it... Like, this album just feels very, like, near and dear to my heart in a way of, like, I can understand the things that Homeboy is going through. So, it, in, that as- in that aspect, I really did just want to, like, go to this tour. I missed the last one, and I was very sad about it because I do just genuinely love their music uh, because, like, it's fun and it's upbeat, even if the lyrics are literally some of the most depressing shit that when you actually start to read them, you go, wow, this song's not nearly as fun, but the beat's still so great. Um, but this was the best show that I have absolutely seen from them. Absolutely seen, period. I think this was probably the best concert that I've ever been to. Um, they played from all of their albums, which is not super common for them. They like to like pull back some of their older songs, but like this was like a two hour concert that they put on. They also had an opener, and their opener played for like maybe 30 minutes. And then the rest of the time, it was 21 Pilots. And I, we had like great seats because we like, We literally got to sit down the whole time because of where we sat. And so it was so nice to just sit there and vibe and have a great time. We didn't get back to the apartment until like 3.30 a.m. And I had to work the next day. But it was fine. So my sleep schedule has been absolute trash the past few days. (laughs) But other than that, I, I was really jazzed. I was really excited. And it made me pretty darn happy this week. Awesome. Yeah. So what about you? What's made you happy? Oh, man. Uh, well, on top of going to the fair with my kid, that was pretty fun. Um, my 3D printer broke on me last weekend. Um, and for this new printer, this is like the first time it's broke broke where I had to go and and get, you know, like buy a part for it and um i was like oh crap you know what am i gonna do this is kind of an expensive part like i kind of do and don't want to deal with all of this and and you know do i just get part of the thing whatever anyway i ordered it on thursday and i the delivery information said it wasn't going to be here till next thursday no tuesday next tuesday um yesterday I was like, you know, let me just check on the the shipping and see where this thing is. Cause that's just one of those things I like to do. And I was like, Oh, delivered. I'm like, what? So last night at eight o'clock, I'm running down to the mailbox going, Oh, it's, it's here. It's finally here <laughs> after like two days, you know? Uh, but yeah, I've been kind of printing stuff all day and I'm filling some orders and getting back in the swing of things. And it is great. So I got, I, I, yeah, I got orders I got to fill now, which is super awesome because I love this new printer that it affords me the opportunity to make money off of it. And that's even better. Plus Christmas time's coming up. So yes. Nice. So what you're going to do is you're going to buy gifts, but then you're going to like bake boxes with your 3D printer to be like, here you go, guys. Everyone's like, oh, cool. You 3D printed me a Christmas box. And then they open it. They're like, whoa, that was That's cool. actually a good idea. It's a actually, gift within a gift. Actually, I made earlier this year, I made a gift card holder that is Ooh, reusable. So that's cool. like what prompted me is a guy from work was like, hey, can you make one of these? And I was like, what is it? You know, and he showed me and it was this someone had printed it in red filament and it was in the shape of an apple. And it was like, oh, it's a gift card holder for teachers. And I was like, 
you know what? I think I can do that. So I did it and it took me a couple days of like sitting down and re, you know, re or printing it and then kind of refurbing it and doing a bunch of things. And basically what it is, is I did one in an apple shape, a present box shape, a Christmas tree shape and something else. But basically it fits a standard size gift card. It's pressure fitted. So it slides in there. You can give it to somebody, wrap it up, give it to somebody. They can use it. And then when they want to give a gift card to someone else, they can use that. Yeah. That's so cool. So no one bought it. I couldn't believe it. I was like, man, this is, what? this is such a banging idea. Not a right? single person bought it. That's and so I crazy. actually put it out on Facebook and was like, Hey, you know, I know we're coming up on the end of the year. If anyone wants to buy gift cards for their teachers and needs like something to put it in, here you go. Like I'm selling these pretty dirt cheap. Hit me up and let me know. Nothing, not a single bite. That's absolutely insane. So, dude, you got to make you an Etsy now. You, can be an Etsy you know, a, a lot of a lot of people have been saying that. I've been selling uh coasters. Coasters have been doing really good, and um, uh, apparently touchdown chains have done turned into a dang old thing that I was not expecting. Uh, people have been making like these three D printed logos of whatever your favorite sports team is with the 3d printed chain and they'll wear them to games and do all this. And I was just like, you know, people's like, Hey, can you make me a touchdown chain? And I'm like, what's that? And they show me, I'm like, yeah, I can do that. Sure. And I made oh, one. Okay, yeah. And now everyone's like, Hey, like I got to make two of them this week. I got to make two of them in a light box. I got hey. a guy, I got a guy on, on tap. Who's like, yeah, man, I want one. I want a Falcons one and a Georgia one. I'm like, I got you. So Yo, that's pretty cool. That's what's up. So, nice. Yeah. Look at you out there. I know. It's great. I went two, two, three years without ever making, a, without ever really making a profit off of my old one. I get this new one that does multiple colors and they're like, make me things. So, yeah. One of everything, please. I'm okay with that. Nice. So, all right. Uh, Raymond, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you on the internets? Uh, on the social medias of the Instagram. I go under that's a Raven Ellis. And if you go on Twitter, it's spooky underscore Raven. You can also find this cute little podcast on whatever social media platform you feel like. It's called Nerd for No Reason. Just look whoa, it up. Whoa. Mark, what about you? You can find me on just about all the social medias at Turtles Do It. Hit me up, say hey, I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening. And as kind of a way, I just want to go ahead and say, because um, I'm going to try, if you're listening to this and you made it this far and you saw the title of the episode and was like, that's different. I'm trying something new this time around uh, just Ooh. to see if it hits differently. Uh, trying some different techniques to be like, if we can uh, uh, use the algorithm to get us out to more ears. So we'll see what happens. Does it slap or is it whack? <laughs> slap or whack? That shit was whack. Damn. Did we? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, I, real quick. I let someone at work borrow my insane clown posse autobiography, which is oh, a God. sentence I'd never thought I'd say. Uh, and <laughs> I had to... Um, I didn't realize this, and I guess it's, again, my age, where I let someone borrow this book, and I said, listen, this book is written the way people talk. It is written in slang. It is written, like, grammatically, I guess it's correct, but, you know, it's written in slang, and here you go. And I let this girl borrow it, and I said, hey, did you ever, did you know who Insane Clown Posse was before the book? And she's like, no and i said what she's like yeah I, like she's like i've i've read like the you know i don't know first couple you know first couple chapters and i didn't know about any of these guys so i'm looking looking up youtube videos of insane clown posse and seeing like these guys talk about this and that and that and i'm like what? what so yeah this girl had absolutely no clue she went into it like 
not having any clue who who Insane Clown Posse, Violet J, Shaggy Two Dope was. And I'm trying to explain to her like 20 years, 30, 40 years of lore to be like, yeah, this group formed like in this and they released this and this and then and here's kind of their story. And then they were beefing with Eminem and that's a whole thing. And they were signed to Disney and that's a whole thing. And <laughs> like this book was put out 20 years ago and you know, there's a whole nother chapter of lore since this book came out, you know? So, and then my friend, my other friend who introduced, you know, who introduced the girl who got the book, I, I was talking to her about, it. I was like, Hey, did you know, she didn't even know who insane clown posse was. She was like, I don't know who they were. And I'm like, what? What? So yeah. Yeah. How, how are these people finding this book and then being like, yeah, sure. I'll read it. Well, the, uh, one, one of the girls, I was like, you know, I said something about Marvel movies and well, these two girls are best friends and they come by the Cuban visit all the time. And I said something about Marvel movies and she's like, I don't watch Marvel movies. And I'm like, hmm. And I said, well, what do you watch? You probably watch like documentaries or something. Don't you? She's like, yeah. I said, you probably read a lot of books, don't you? She's like, yeah. I said, do you like autobiography? She's like, yeah. I said, I have the perfect one for you. Oh, my God. You know? And I was like, you know, if you're get, like, this is this is something where I could be like, yeah, it's an autobiography. And they'll think it's like, you know, uh, 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 Obama, Hillary Clinton, you know, George Bush, like, oh, my life. Colin Powell growing up and becoming a famous political person. No, these are two two high school dropouts <laughs> from Detroit that are, you know, the most, one of the most successful rap groups on the planet. So <laughs> it's so weird. It's so weird. And then, and there's a documentary on prime about it. Crazy, crazy. Insane in the membrane, man. Listen, y'all go and do something <laughs> wonderful in the world this week. You guys go and just on the coolest, newest forms of media, and we'll see you again next week on the Nerd for No Reason podcast. Did you say bye? You started cutting I out did. right towards the end. Oh, okay. did I? I said yeah, goodbye. Oh, that's awkward. Oh, man. Okay, bye, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Nerd for No Reason podcast. You can find us on all major social media platforms at Nerd for No Reason. Our podcast music is Memories in 8-Bit by Deanna Joan, a.k.a. Fergie's Human. You can follow her on Twitter at Deanna Joan Music and check out her other social media links in the show notes of our podcast. Stumble across the finish line. Just a limping. That's me. Sorry, Chris walked over to me holding two raviolis in his hand to show them to me. I'm, I'm going to explain that it's a little bat and a little pumpkin. Goddamn. They were very cute. And he was coming over to show them to me because he. Do about you to like cook my them. raviolis? Excuse me, ma'am. Can I interest you in a ravioli? One ravioli, please. Uncooked, unfiltered, no sauce. <laughs> unfiltered. <laughs> it's like how I like my cigarettes stuffed for ricotta. Uh, they're healthy for you. Hell yeah, they are. <laughs> you know it.